warm up dance. Oh. Get into the habit of filming stuff again and not talking absolute tripe. Words and things! <laughs> well, good morning everybody and How welcome do? back to the garage. It has been an exceptionally long time, but we are still here. Uh, I'm still here, Kieran's still there, and we are alive. Kieran has turned up today on what? The KLR 250! And Kieran has a problem with it, so Kieran, what's your bloody problem? Well, amongst other things, owning too much stuff, being a hoarder, um, but specifically with the KLR over there, there seems to be a bit of a fuel leak when I've left it with this fuel tap on. Um, so, dogs, no. Um, so we need to sort out either what that is, uh, but my first port of call is going to be the carb, because it's also kind of stuttering a little bit on some of the acceleration. So it should hopefully sort of resolve a number of issues with one task. And I'm now straddling a dog, but for you guys, we'll be getting on with some work. Did you get all of that? Let's go and have a look. Okay, so we are a fair ways on from the last video that I did, mainly because I was having issues with the memory card I had and lost potentially all of the progress that I've made. Um, but for today's video, Jazzy Guards, um, we're going to be getting into the carb, which means removing various features to make access so much easier. So it'll be the side panels, the seat, the tank, and that gives us full access to get into the carb under there. Trusty Allen number five, getting these side panels. Perfect. That's the side panels and seat off. Now for the tank, which again, another little five at the back there. Five mil Allen, it's your friend. So we've got the five mil Allen out at the back of the tank and uh, there's some more little Allen bolt screwy things just at the side of the tank where the fairing jobber is, that little plastic piece there. So we take them out. There's a couple of pipes underneath the fuel tank and uh, we've got the fuel tap in the off position and then we'll get that tank off. Meanwhile, we'll just watch Kieran bend over this bike. Well, there we are, that's one fuel tank removed. Now we can get a better view of things. There's obviously a selection of delights to remove. Uh, we've got your two throttle linkages um, or cables, whatever doodads. Um, on the back side, you've got the choke uh, mechanism to take off. There is the two securing... Um, what are they called, John? What are you pointing at? These... Sorry, people, I sort of nodded off a bit there. What's happening? You plum. These days. Jubilee things. clips. That's the words we're after. You can never remember the name of Jubilee clips. Act actual words for proper things. Um, so they've got to come off either side, and then that should allow us to remove this uh, little box of tricks to have a look inside. Just round the other side to show the choke mechanism where it connects into the carb. There's a coolant pipe right here going down into the uh, carburetor and then a return on the other side, which we are assuming, because we've not looked at this before, that this is a heated carburetor. And that's what that's for. So we've just put um, a little clamp on this one. There's one on the other side, and we're going to try and remove these pipes and minimise the amount of coolant loss. Pipe removed. It was very difficult to show that because it's quite dark down there. So apologies, but you get the idea. That's attached on underneath the bottom of the carb, and it's got a little clip thing here which you've just um, opened up with some pliers and then pulled off your pipe. Next bit, we're going to take off these cables. Uh, it's 10 mil uh, fitting on the top. So just have to slacken it off and unwind it so you get enough flex to be able to remove this little peanut on the bottom. Please be careful if you've got a peanut allergy. Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> Thank you. 
just come around this side to film something and notice Kieran's battery strap is a giant elastic band, poor lad. <laughs> well, you just got to use what you've got to hand. Use what you've got to hand, obviously. So, anybody that is familiar with the Make It Better style of mechanicking will know that inappropriate tool use is a thing that does happen sometimes. <laughs> and we're getting in here trying to remove the choke cable from the side of the carburetor and the access is uh, not great. So Kieran's got a pair of circlip pliers. It should allow me to sort of get hold of the sort of hexagonal sides and to be able to twist it without sort of mangling it because it is a plastic fitting rather than a metal one that you can be a bit more aggressive with but just enough to kind of loosen it off and then and get the rest away by hand i think well there we are is there such a thing as an inappropriate tool if i don't works. know like if it works and it doesn't damage anything i suppose that's the criteria yeah. okay well inappropriate tool use we're back people we're back boom and this fitting should come out it's a little spring-loaded kind of vessel. Pop, 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 pop. Skira, maybe show us, now we can see, what you were doing with the circlip pliers there, in case it wasn't clear. So, got around the outside of there, just was able to work it loose. Lovely. We've got a Jubilee clip at the front here, holding this carb on, and another one at the back here. The one at the front is uh, a screwdriver fitting, which Kieran's doing from the other side. And then this- Getting away from me, John. Oh no, this is a seven mil little nut holding this one on, which I'm attempting to do right now. Smooth as silk. This looks like it's gonna be fun to get back in. Hmm. <laughs> yep. Perfect. And that's how you fix the carburetor on a KLR250. Yep, that should work a lot better in that orientation. Perfect. There might be a slight uh, vacuum leak, but just put a little bit of silicon basically over that hole there, yeah. and uh, that one there as well, and you should be fine. Tools and things. It is a little bit reluctant to come out, so if yours is reluctant to come out, then welcome to the club. What you can do is you can take an angle grinder with a cutting disc and you could cut the frame here and here, and then the exhaust here and here, and then you'll have plenty of access to remove that carburetor. Another top tip from, from the garage. Don't do that. Disclaimer. Silly bollock. Well, there it goes. It's gone out the other way. So Kieran removed the... Uh, coolant tank which I think was just held on with one bolt up the top there was it yeah pretty much and then that's given all the access on the other side to just pull that out so uh, what we said earlier about cutting the frame and the exhaust like don't do that um, just silly idea take the coolant tank off and send it out that way easy when you do it the right way it seems <laughs> finally the heart of the bike removed so we're going to take this into the warm and uh, work on it you can see my breath which is not the best condition for working on such fiddly things. So, to the house! Welcome to a clean working environment. Um, we've saved the kitchen worktop with this delightful plastic lid and it gives us a place to put all our little trinkets around the edge as we disassemble this little beast. So get your jizz ready and crack it open. You might be able to see there's one that is not like the others. Because we had to find a replacement and it wasn't the best, but it is an option. And there it is, a blood-stained wreck. You can see that seal is a little bit swollen. So that could be part of the problem. Get out of here. What does it look like? So just slight bit of dirt, but that's only kind of really down in that uh, little poop tray. What about this? It's all floaty business. So not looking too bad, but 
essentially we are going to be stripping it down and replacing a bunch of bits we've got all the jazzy business in this box that we don't yet know exactly what everything is for like where's that little disc what is that about step one remove the floats little pin goes through there just pushes out and you can lift the floats out and the float needle there it is look Ta -da. step two remove the jets hopefully not too gnarly there we go it's coming out There it is. This one seems to be a 118. A 118? Is that a good thing or a bad thing? I don't know. Down the chute. Yep, 35. A 35. Also unknown whether it is good or bad. Next up then we're taking out the adjustment screw. Before we took that out, we carefully wound that all the way until it was seated in. And it was how many turns did we say? About three and a quarter. About three and a quarter. So that's, uh, that's what it was at. I think the manual says it might need to be two. Just was it two? two? Just two out. So we will investigate that. So manual says two, Kieran's was three and a quarter. So we'll see how we feel about that. We've got a new one, we've got a replacement for that, which is why we're taking it out. So we may as well stick that new one in. Just looking at the carburetor specifications in the manual. Ooh, shadow. And um, looks like non-standard on Kieran's bike. So you see there, the uh, main jet is uh, stated as being a 120. Kieran's got a 118. And the pilot jet is 35, but Kieran does have a 35. So yeah, the main jet is not the standard main jet. Interesting. With me dirty fingers. Everything's been dismantled and cleaned with carburetor cleaner. Uh, you can, at this point, use compressed air to blow through some of the airways and stuff, but to be honest, these all seem pretty clear, so we've not done that. And uh, we're just replacing the old bits with the new bits. Again, the old bits look fine. I don't think there's anything actually wrong with them. Uh, but while we've got the new bits, we're gonna put them on anyway. So as Kieran's got in his hand there, there's a tiny, tiny little rubber sealing ring and a little metal washer, which goes down. Where does that go, Kieran? Down into the adjustment uh, recess. It's down there in the bottom the of that. Yeah, there is the replacement screw in there already. Yeah. With the new spring. Uh, that's why you can't see too far down there. So that's, uh, that's the old one there. Again, it looks fine. It has a little spring on it. The spring seems fine. But we've uh, put the new one in anyway. Just in case of screwing it in. What's next then? Um, so the other, the main jet has been refitted. Later stage, I might look at getting a different one, see what difference going back to the standard 120 will do, or maybe try my luck with the uh, Swiss or West German 128 and uh, see what brap braps I can be making. Need more braps. Switching to smaller. We're going to wind it all the way back down to fully seated. Obviously, just being cautious with it first going back in so that everything sits in where it should be. Um, so find where the bottom is. And then bring it back two turns. Going for the standard two then, rather than the three and a quarter that we found it. Yeah. Okay. Needle. So the float needle, we're going to just reattach to the floats, because it's the needle for the floats, float needle, it makes sense. Is this the new one? This is the new one, the old one put over there out of the way, and then we can kind of just balance it in its little hole, and then pop the pin back through. 
At this stage, you can do any necessary adjustments, which, uh, you know, follow the manual, see what heights you're wobbling at, and then tweak this little tab at the back if you need it. We've just measured the float height, which should be 17.5 mil, plus or minus 2 mil, and that is done too far. Too far. Right there. Here. So it's a case of measuring from the mating surface of the carburetor to the height of the uh, float at this point without compressing this little needle thing here. Uh, it should be 17.5 mil and Kieran's is 17 mil, so we're happy with that. We're going to leave that. We don't think that's the cause of the problems he's been having. So this, just to show the real world kind of thing rather than just the book, something in that sort of rough orientation. So we're using vernier calipers here with this little protrusion at the bottom to measure this distance from this surface to the height of that float there without compressing that. Hope that made sense. Carburetors are always confusing. There's a tap. Swap this seal back in. The new seal, which does seem to sit a whole load better than the last one which may be the problem, but we'll find out. Right, all back together, all the shonky screws in place and freshly mangled, so we're gonna go chuck this back in the bike. Yeah. Now that we've got the car back with the bike and we've remembered how to take it out properly rather than wrestling out the wrong side, uh, we can put it back together the right way and the whole simple process as you've seen is going to be the reversal of removal but with less effort and wrestling so we're going to whop it back together give it a bit of a test ride uh, maybe leave it on its side for a bit see if it leaks if not bob's your uncle jibber jobber done so moving on Well, we are all back together and sending him out on a little test ride. If you remember, we changed that mixture screw. It was three and a quarter turns out and now it's two turns out. So we're going to see how that pans out and also make sure everything else has been put back together correctly. So wave goodbye to Kieran. Goodbye, Kieran. See you shortly. He's back. Let's see how he gets on. We are hiding in the warmth again, but he's back, look, he made it, so it's obviously not too bad. Hello! How was it? Well, there's definitely a marked improvement on the non-tinkered with, whereas before at certain levels in the acceleration, there's a bit of a flat spot or a bit of a stutter, and so it'd be like um, But this time, nice smooth kind of Linear, uh, if that's the... Yeah, we'll go with that. Uh, but essentially just a smooth acceleration right the way through. Um, managed to get up to 50 in a, certainly a 50 zone um, <laughs> that was that was allowed. Um, and certainly a much uh, better result for, for riding with. Much smoother, much more enjoyable. Well, good. You yes. can't say fairer than that. An improvement of any kind is an improvement. That's what they say, isn't it? Yeah, I think that's a well-known saying. <laughs> See, it's this kind of goal that you've missed when uh, oh, we've been away. But uh, yeah, we'll call that the end of this video. It's time for a cup of tea. And uh, as ever, hopefully it was useful. We know it wasn't too technical uh, or too clever. And we know that we bodged a, a few things. But uh, hey, you know, let's make but it better. we are so back <laughs> that's what you get. after a good while. If nothing um, else, yeah, it does prove that we're not dead. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, look forward to the next video in six months. Um, which might feature a town mate. Yes, town mate update coming soon, so uh, join us for that soon. Soon, <laughs> soon definitely soon. Ish. Goodbye. Bye. See you later. Bye, bye, bye. Bye, bye, bye. Bye, bye. Bye. bye.